Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the cathode ray oscilloscope. I'm going to look at the parts of a cathode ray oscilloscope and their uses and explain the functioning of the cathode ray oscilloscope. My name is Clive Ndemo. Stay with me until the end. A cathode ray oscilloscope is an electrical instrument used to display waveforms and also measure voltages. The main feature of the cathode ray oscilloscope is the cathode ray tube. The cathode ray oscilloscope has three main parts, the electron gun, the deflecting system, and a fluorescent screen. Let us look at the first major part, that is the electron gun. It consists of the following parts, the cathode, the control grid, and two cylindrical anodes. The cathode produces electrons by thermionic emission. The control grid is used to control the brightness of the spot by controlling the amount of electrons passing through it. The grid is made more negative to reduce the number of electrons passing through it, and it is made less negative to increase the number of electrons passing through it. The two cylindrical anodes are used as follows. The first anode is used to accelerate the electrons towards the screen, while the second anode focuses the electrons into a fine beam. The second major part is the deflection system. The deflection system is used to deflect the electron beam either vertically or horizontally. It consists of two pairs of plates, that's the X plates and the Y plates. When a potential difference is applied on the plates, an electric field is set up which will deflect the beam in the appropriate direction, either vertically or horizontally. Let us look at the vertical deflection. Vertical deflection is caused by Y plates. When a direct current flows through the plates, they become charged. Plate Y1 becomes positive while Y2 becomes negative. This makes the beam to be attracted to Y1, hence it hits the screen at point B. If polarity of the plates is reversed, the spot will shift to C. When the plates are uncharged, the beam passes undeviated and hits the screen at point A. If an alternating current is used instead of direct current, the spot moves up and down. Horizontal deflection is caused by X plates. The X plates are connected to a special circuit called a time-based circuit. When switched on, the time base applies a potential difference on the X plates. The potential difference in the time base increases uniformly to a maximum value called peak voltage and then suddenly drops to zero. This means that the spot moves horizontally across the screen until peak voltage is reached and then returns to zero instantly. When the spot moves horizontally across the screen, it's called the sweep and when it returns instantly to zero, it's called a flyback. The sweep is controlled by the time-based control knob. The graph below shows the AC current against time when the spot moves across the screen. The higher the frequency, the shorter the time of sweep. The sweep can take between 10 milliseconds per centimeter to 100 milliseconds per centimeter. If an AC signal is applied on both the Y plates and the X plates at the same time, the result is that the spot on the screen will oscillate up and down. The last major part of the cathode ray oscilloscope is the fluorescent screen. It is at the end of the tube. This is where the electron beam forms a bright spot. It's coated with a fluorescent substance, e.g. zinc sulfide, which glows when electrons strike it. The inside of the screen is coated with graphite, which has three main functions. One, acts as earthing. Two, shielding the electron beam from external fields. Three, accelerating the electron beam to the screen because it has the same potential as the anode. Well, that is it for today's discussion. In the next discussion, we're going to discuss the uses of the cathode ray oscilloscope.